Well, ex Victorian rangeman James Herbertson put up a brilliant display here tonight, taking out the New South Wales Trotters Derby with the Joe Pace trained Harry Stamper. Caught up with James after his Group 1 success. Well, James, congratulations. Earlier in the night, we teed up this interview, but now we're speaking to you as a four-time Group 1 winning rangeman, having taken out the New South Wales Trotters Derby with Harry Stamper for Joe Pace. What a win. Yeah, he's very good, mate. Uh, thank you for that. Look, he, he's generally a sit sprinter and uh, had to be a bit more aggressive on him tonight than I would have liked to be. And, and uh, He was a lot sharper than what he was in his first up run. I've only driven him the once at Bendigo and you know, he impressed me with his speed and you know, I just wanted to drive him for his speed tonight. But the way the race panned out and where we lobbed, uh, you know, we're only on a helmet for you know, a few hundred metres early and then when Chris Lang popped off down the back, um, gave him another breather. But at the same time we were running. so. You know, for a little sit sprinter to come out and do that against the top class horses um, up here is a, is a very good effort. James, he showed a lot of grit and determination and you seem to be pretty confident halfway down the straight because it is a long straight. Yeah, luckily it is a long straight, but uh, you know, uh, the, the leader ran the same sort, of, same sort of race last week. It got tired late, which luckily it did, and uh, you know, if it, if it kept going, we probably wouldn't have been able to beat it. But uh, you know, to the little horse's credit, uh, he sprinted hard from the top of the straight and his run was right through the line, you know, he powered through the line and uh, he knocked off a little bit late once we got in front, but you know, he's still a little horse that's learning and uh, you know, he's got a big future. James, your first Group 1 winners was Savannah JJ, the Australasian Trotters Championship, a Group 1 event, virtually four years to the day. Yeah, look, he's a, he's a great horse for me. Uh, I got on him late in his career and we sort of clicked and, you know, had a really good run, you know, won a Group 1 and... A lot of you know nice group races in Melton and, and around the uh, around the state, and unfortunately he, uh, his career came to an end with an injury. But you know he was a, a great horse and gave me a kickstart on you know the top class races. James Queensland born, the decision by the family to move to Victoria was it always around harness racing? Yeah, look, dad dad was quite successful in Queensland as a trainer, and uh, mum was a steward actually at the when they met up there, and uh, you know they moved down here because the rest of the family's down here, you know, good base and. Uh, you know, now we're on the farm at, at Lexton and, uh, you know, things are really good. You know, it's, it's enjoyable and uh, it's quite central for the driving. Uh, you know, down there we race sort of every day, so, you know, to be central and uh, not too far from everywhere is a, a big plus. Fourth generation following in the footsteps for your great-grandfather, Eric White, your great-uncle, Merv White, and, of course, your dad, Ashley. Yeah, look, it's a, it's a great family affair. And, you know, on the other side of the family as well, uh, with mum, she was a steward, and with my grandfather, uh, he also trained in Queensland and Victoria. And, you know, he had quite a lot of luck with uh, not very good horses. So, uh, you know, and even my nan, she was one of the first female drivers. Uh, so, you know, it's on, it's on both sides of the family and definitely in the blood. Your first winner, March 10, 2016, as a 16-year-old. First drive, and it was for Dad, at Tarang Tear It Up. Yeah, look, it was a great night. Uh, you know... To be able to pick it up on the first go, I thought, geez, how easy is this? And then I, I definitely got a big wake-up call the second time around. But, uh, you know, he was a great horse. And I, I've got his name on the back of my helmet. He'll, uh, he'll, he's got his place there. He's, he did a great job. You know, he's an old paraplegic sort of thing. He had bad legs and used to hang and pull. And he taught me a lot. And, uh, you know, I was very lucky to be able to get on him in a good race. Now, James, would it be fair to say you started your career as a reluctant driver? Yeah, look, I, I was probably more headed toward a tr towards a trade or, or something like that. I, I'd still be in the industry, but not uh, not to the capacity that I, well, back then thought that I'd be in now. Um, but, you know, when Matty Craven started driving for Dad, uh, he was an inspiration, to put it plainly. Uh, I always looked up to Dad, as you do, but, you know, um, Matthew sort of got me into it and, and got me interested, and I started doing the pony trots, and, and that then led on to, uh, you know, fast working and, and then trials and, and so on and so forth. But... You know, without Matthew and, and the Craven and Lee boys from down to um, you know, I probably wouldn't be, be driving now. And James, once you get the bug, it's hard to get rid of. Yeah, definitely. You know, I, I love the sport and I love uh, I love winning. I hate getting beat. You talk to anyone, I get uh, you know quite emotional if I uh, if I feel it was something that I'd done wrong. Um, you know, but uh, it's a great industry and there's great people in it. You know, like like Joe that we've uh, won the Derby for tonight. You know, he's just they put a lot of money into the industry and. You know, they're, they're really good people, so to be able to win a nice race for them, you know, it's, it's, it makes it extra special, really. James, I had the pleasure to meet Joe and also do an interview with him prior to the race being run. He's got a huge opinion of this horse. Yeah, he does. Look, he, he paid good money for him from, from New Zealand, and, uh, you know, he wasn't overly, you know, 
but I think that you saw the best of him over there. Uh, you know, um, he he's de definitely got a lovely turn of foot, and he did, probably didn't get to see that really tonight, uh, nice. just because he was sort of had to drive him a little bit tough. Uh, but you know, he's a lovely little horse. He's got great manners, great gait, and uh, you know, wh whatever you do, he are, he can do it. You know, if you sit him in, pop him out, you know, he goes when you say go, and he stops when you say stop. So. You know, he's had a great base um, in New Zealand and great education and it's, you know, it'll take him a long way. James, you mentioned the amount of racing in Victoria. It's not unusual for you. You don't mind hard work. You can go to the day meeting and back up at night. Yeah, look, um, no, I don't miss too many meetings. You know, I probably get a, a day or two off every month. Um, you know, but I'm at majority of the meetings and uh, very lucky. I've got a lot of uh, people behind me, a lot of good trainers, a lot of small trainers, not that many big trainers, but you know, quality small trainers like Joe and, you know, uh, along with Dad's horses, we've only got, a, you know, probably 12 in work at the moment. And, uh, but, you know, without Dad and, and Mum and the team at home, I wouldn't be where I am today, that's for sure. James, you also consider yourself to be the maintenance manager at, on the farm, 5,000 sheep and 12 or so horses. Not unusual for you to be out mending fences or on the tractor? No, I do enjoy it. It's a bit of a break from the racing and the constant sort of uh, pressure. And, you know, down the track, I'm looking forward to, uh, you know, to taking over the farm and, and, you know, getting into the sheep. And it's a, it's a passion and, you know, it's not something I've had a lot to do with because I didn't grow up with them. But, uh, you know, it's, it's in the blood as well. You know, my grandfather's been a shearer all his life. So, uh, I definitely won't be shearing them, I know that, my hips and, and, uh, and that wouldn't be able to cop it, but I'll, uh, you know, it's something to look forward to in the future. And James, you've had a lot of success on the Country Cups. Yeah, we've had a, had a great run, had a lot of good opportunities and, you know, with Emane Macca and, and more recently, uh, you know, Supreme Dominator, he beat Amazing Dream at Cranbourne, which is, you know, it's no mean feat, she's an absolute champion mare and she's, you know, she's racing in, in America now and, you know, they can't beat her over there, so... Um, Joe's got a lovely little horse there as well. You know, he'll uh, he's he's got a big future, and he'll I'm sure he'll target a few more country cups, and you know, hopefully we can keep picking them off. Uh, you know, when I first started, that's something I definitely wanted to do was win country cups, not so much uh, you know big races in Melton or so or that, but you know, just with the small country cups and the small clubs, it means a lot to them, and they make a they make a big thing of it, and it's a great day. James. You've mentioned the admiration you have for your family helping you out in the industry and also Matty Craven, but Gavin Lang certainly meant a lot to you. Yeah, he did. You know, uh, Gav, uh, whenever people ask me about Gav, I sort of get a bit lost for words, really. Um, as I said to you before, he's he's a bloke that uh, he, he, was a, he was a person that you, you talk to and he doesn't have to talk for you to listen. Uh, his actions and the way he carried himself and, you know, that he's just his racing mind um, on track, you know, you go back and you watch races and, uh, you know, he, he was just the best and, you know, I hold him as high as anyone uh, and, you know, it's a shame that we've lost him and, you know, he's, he's got a photo on, on uh, my bedroom wall when, uh, when he drove a winner for dad and, and that, so, uh, you know, he's a, he's a champion person and, you know, the industry's, uh, you know, we've lost a person that, you know, Everything revolved around Gab, really. James, we often hear one of my favourite race callers, Lockie McIntosh, just refer to you as Herbie. You're like Sher or Bono, just Herbie. You'll have to get him to throw in now. Herbie, four-time Group 1 winning rangeman. No, Lockie, he's a, he's a great caller, and uh, I, I do love it when he calls. He always has a little bit extra to say about me, and, you know, if I'm having a bit of an average day, he'll pump me up a little bit and, and, uh, and that, but, you know, the nicknames, they're, they're part of it, you know, like Puppet, and, you know, if, if someone... You know, in the public knows Puppet and they, they know Herb, well, I, I'm more than happy with that to be on uh, on par with him. He's another champion bloke and I love racing against him. He's, um, the, the amount that you can learn off Chris as well, you know, it's a testament to him. And he's, he's, he's vigour and he's, uh, the way he races, it's, he's a very hard person to beat. Oh, I struggle to beat him and, you, you know, his competitiveness is just, it's second to none. So... To be able to race against him and, you know, Anthony Barton, Karen Manning, the class of driver that we have in Victoria, to be able to race against him and call them mates as well off the track, um, you know, we're very lucky. Well, James, I'll leave Herbie to Lockie. I'm just going to say, James, congratulations on your success tonight. Hopefully we'll see you at Clubman Angle on a far more regular basis. It's great to have your skills here. No worries, mate. Thank you very much.